What's up YouTube? My name's Quickie, welcome back to the channel. Yeah, it's freezing in here. Freezing! Um, right, so in the last one, I did like the, the base plates, the mounting plates for the footrests. And in this one, I need to get the rest of it sort of sorted out, basically. Nasty, nasty foot peg. <laughs> it's horrible, the lever's not much better either. Um, basically, these are the bits that we're gonna have to remake. So, proper foot peg that goes all the way through and bolts up to the, uh, the mounting plate and stuff. Then I'll need a lever that goes on there and it's gonna have a brass bushing either side of it as well. And that little pull thingy that goes onto the, you know, the brake master cylinder, that's in the wrong place. That sort of needs to come up sort of, I don't know, 45-ish degrees maybe. I don't know, something like that. Um, and I'm also gonna need to remake that little brackety jobby um, this is what screws onto the thread that comes out the bottom of the, um, the master cylinder. Trouble is, I, I want it sort of at 90 degrees. <laughs> There's not a lot of room there. They're really in. Because of the way the, the swing arm is, it's really big and bulky on the right-hand side. And all its lumps and bumps and stuff is in the wrong place. So there's not a lot of clearance. So this thing needs to change. Otherwise, it, there is a chance it could rub. We ain't having that. Um, so I was mucking about with CAD. However, I didn't get all my measurements, so I didn't know what the clearances were and everything else. So I came up with a really pretty design and stuff. Steve I quite likes it. I ain't got a Scooby if it's gonna work, because I don't know if there's enough room. <laughs> <laughs> so I figured we're just gonna hash it out as we go, basically, and whatever I come up with, I'm just gonna copy on the other side, and that'll be that. So I've got some alley and some brass. We ain't gonna need that bit. And I've also got some more of that 10 mil thick um, plate that we made the back plates out of. So I need to get two levers out of that and then some. So we're just gonna like have at it and see what we can come up with. I think I remember what I did on CAD. I've got an idea what it looks like. But anyway, now I'm here, I can actually measure stuff, which is what I should have done in the first place, I know, but I didn't. And you know, we'll, we'll come up with something, we'll get it done. So all me tidying this up, and getting it all spick and span and stuff, I'm just going to make it a right mess again because I'm using the mill. <laughs> I think I know what I'm doing. I'm doing that. <laughs> Why didn't I do it in CAD? Right, okay, I think I know what I'm doing now. So we're gonna start doing the foot peg first. That's gonna be the easiest bit. Because if I get this turned down and I get the shoulder on it, so it goes all the way up to the mountain plate, then essentially I'm filling the gap in. Um, Lever's only ever going to be 10 mil because that's all I've got. Three mil on the bushings either side. So I think we should be all right there. I think we should be good. Right, let's get this done then. I'll need that.
so that's one foot peg done. I will get a picture and stick it up just so you can see. Um, but it's all machined off the end, it's all nice and neat and tidy. Nailed it, put some stripes in it just with a cut off tool. Cutting off still scares the willies out of me. <laughs> <laughs> That's something I'm never gonna do with the automatic cross feed. That's all done manually with a truckload of oil. It's got an M6 thread, way deeper than I need. Um, but the, you know, I like the idea of winding a long bolt in there just because that's, that's what's what. And it was M6 on these jobbies as well. So that's gonna be plenty big enough, I think. Plenty strong enough. Um, got space for the bushes and for the lever to fit on here. So the whole thing is gonna clamp up to the, um, the back plate and that should be solid. So I've now got one I can copy. So, you know, get this side done and the other one's gonna be a doddle. And I did get my brush caught in my knurling tool again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's going in the bin. <laughs> right, so I've been playing with the lever. That's what I'm going to do. Can you see that? That's it, just roughed out. Um, so what I'm going to do is have this off on the bandsaw, just because I don't need all this bulk and it's just going to make it a little bit easier. Um, so I'm probably just going to zip it across here because that way I've still got places to clamp it down on the milling machine. Then we can get the holes in the right places. I think that needs to be 50 mil up to the lever. I don't know. I'm probably going to make a cardboard template of this and just stick it on and see how it's all going to work. That sounds like a good idea actually. But then this is getting hogged out on the mill. So I need to sort all that out. Um, and we can go from there. It is going to have a slot in the middle of it, just because otherwise it's going to look quite bulky. But we'll get that nipped out. And then it's just the bushing. Okay, it's basically there. I've, I've chopped off a bit of that alley and just set it up in here. I've got some like sacrificial bits underneath the clamps just to raise it up off the bed because obviously I'm going to be drilling through it. That's more template. <laughs> I had to move this little arm round and I'm purposely going to leave it long because until I get the, the little brackety jobby on the bottom of the um, master cylinder done, I'm not really going to know how you know long to make it and all that sort of stuff. So I'll just sort that out later on. We've got loads of room on here to do this. So that's fine. All I'm going to do is put my holes at either end and then I'm going to reference off them for everything else. So literally straight down the middle, this, it, both sides are going to be cut at an angle, ultimately, but I'll just mill them down, that'll be fine. Um, and then once we know where that little bracket is going to go, I can stick a final hole in there once it's all done and dusted. So, if we line this up roughly in the middle, two holes, five mil, 125 mil apart. Right. <laughs> So we're getting there. 
As I haven't done this bit yet, obviously. Um, that's going to be for the, you know, where you press the brake master cylinder. I want to get all the rest of it done up though, so I'm going to stick it on the bike. And then I can measure that and get it right, and I'll just do like a little sort of triangular, bit like that, but smaller. So it's all going well. Um, I am making a right mess. I've cleaned up four times. <laughs> it just goes everywhere. But I'm liking that. It's spaced off a little bit here as well, as you can see. Um, so it's going to stick out. And then I need to basically bore a hole through there that that's going to go through. And then we can have the bushings either side of it. They're only going to be skinny ones, but I want bushings there. And we should be good, I think. We should be good. Yes. a few issues <laughs> it's not all been plain sailing um where i have the hole in the middle of the you know where the peg's going to go through started running a bigger drill bit through it big drill bits wander and it wandered it wandered quite a lot actually so i've had to switch out to the boring head so i can get a boring bar on it to basically centralize the hole again so i picked up either side of the um, this little raised up bit with an edge finder. I found what should be the centre and then I'm just having to go carefully down it with a boring um, bar in the mill just to get the hole back in the middle so it's not all cockeyed. <laughs> um, right, where are we going? done. A little bit of deburring needed on the back. Well, that's all right. I'll get a picture of this and shove it up just so you can see. But it's nice and smooth on the inside. I've got a little shoulder, obviously a bigger shoulder on the back. I'll deburr in now actually. Uh, right, so that will be fine to run a brass bushing in. So it all operates nice and smoothly.
so that's the last little bit done then. It ain't come up too bad at all. These are the little bushes that I've made. Nothing special, nothing special at all, but he's gonna go in there like that. Oh, it's a snug fit. It's not tight, snug. <laughs> now that one goes in the end. Come on, it is snug. And that's it, that's how it's all gonna be. So it all moves quite happily and freely. I still need to do this piece up here though. Um, I need to make up the bracket that goes on, you know, screws onto the master cylinder. Um, so that bit's not even done yet, but um, let me show you. Can you see that? Looks all right, doesn't it? I will get a picture and stick it up here, just so you can have a look, see. But for a simple peg, that's not, there is a tiny, tiny bit of wiggle room. Nothing to speak of, nothing at all. So that is gonna work. Oh, I'm liking that. Right, so he goes on like that. That'll move nice and freely. There, I don't know if you can see this. Uh, where are you? There, there is the tiniest bit of wiggle room. Bugger all, and a lot less than you get on these things. They're just stupid. And it's got bearings in it, which is harder, I get that, but um, that'll be fine. Um, the lever's gonna wanna be about there. If you can see from the top, I've just got this arm here to shape up and this little doicky thing. That screws on the end of there. It would ordinarily have just, you know, been linked up here, but that's wrong. I need to remake this. I need to make that lock come up at 90 degrees. So I can wind it right down to about there. And we can just have a flat bracket you come up with a hole through it, shove a bolt through it, jobs are good. That does look quite good, doesn't it? I do like the brass in alley. I like the brush finish. I think when that's done properly, that's gonna look really good. So, um, what next? I might as well make this thing, I suppose. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> a bit of bar and keep the spatter off the, the threads. All my nice turned down bit of whatever, this <laughs> now looks horrible, so it needs dressing up. I am gonna let it cool first. Kettle is on, I'm having a brew. It, ooh, that's not good. Why does stuff grow in a coffee mug? And why is it airy? That'll do. Basically, I've just I've dressed up the welded stuff. It still needs prettying up, um, but I'm just gonna leave that for Steve-O to give him something to do when he's down here next. <laughs> so if we stick this on here. I 
basically by moving this little brackety jobby that I've done up and down the threads, you'll be able to change the position of the foot pedal. So I know I'm basically setting it where it was before. He didn't seem to complain about it. And if he wants to change it, he can change it, can he? So if that wants to go about there, that's it. So we'll wind the lock nut up to that point. So I know where we are. Um, we still have two lock nuts on that go through the bracket, but essentially the peg I've just made, well that's threaded anyway, so it's kind of, it's gonna do the same job, isn't it? I'll just round it over, you're not gonna see it anyway, it's hidden. Um, but, you know, you wanna try and make things nice, don't you? Right, so he's like that. That'll do it. Right, let's have this bracket off. I'm gonna drill the hole in that and then shape that down. I'm gonna need a spanner. <laughs> <laughs> right, I think we is basically in. So, hole in the end, just shaped it up, made it look nice and neat. Oh, bugger, he wants a slot in it as well, doesn't he? Right, that'll have to wait. <laughs> All right, let's have a look. Okay. He's going on there. That one's going on the inside. Away again. Where's that gone? <laughs> I need to tidy up. <laughs> Jobby goes on the end of the lever. We're in M6, see what do. I think we screw on there. This bolt's probably too long. No. Alright, it's only temporary. Really, I want to put dome heads on all this. Um, just because I think it will look better. Um, and then we've got our little uh, jobby here. A washer. <laughs> Come on. This one's definitely going to be too long. I'm going to have to shorten him up. Actually, I could do that now. I will do it later. Come on. There we go. Um, 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 um. 
It will get a washer on the back. I just can't be doing with getting one now. <laughs> Uh, what size are you? No. You're going to be the one size that's on that flaming ratchet. I can't find my ratchet anywhere. And I'm well or not, I was using it. I'll put it down and I don't know where it's gone. It's really annoying. I like that ratchet, it did all my favourite things. Where is it? I've got to use the nasty one. Obviously I've got to trim this down. Uh, I've got to trim the, the thread down on the right master cylinder, but that'll do. That'll do a treat. Oh, I'm happy with that. So you can have that off. Um, what else have I got to do? That does work lovely. Right, I want to have a go at this cold bluing actually. I want to see what it's like. Right, so he's all cleaned. And I haven't touched him since. We've got um, some of this goo. One part of blue to two parts of water. Uh, 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 uh. Immerse the part. Make sure it's totally covered. I could do that. He's covered. Oh. Cool, it don't take long, does it? That don't take long at all. Start changing colour. Right. The metal will slowly darken. Well, no, it's doing it quite quickly. <laughs> Very dark blue, this will take three minutes. Three minutes. Remove the part, rinse it thoroughly, blah, blah, blah. Right. Oh, look at that. Right, three minutes. I could tidy up in three minutes. Let's give that a bash. Right, three minutes later, I don't know if you're supposed to touch it or not. Ooh. It's black. Right, I'm gonna go and wash this off. Right, he's all washed off. What was next? Uh, so that, uh, remove the parts, which water thoroughly. Spray the wet parts immediately with a suitable dewatering water repellent. Okay, WD-40. Right, he's covered. Um. Leave for the blue to harden for at least one hour, then wipe with a soft cloth. Right then. Um, well, you can hang on there, and I can finish tidying up.
together. That's all right, doesn't it? Plain, simple, like the rest of the bike. That's going to fit in. Um, I will get a picture and stick it up just so you can see. Um, I haven't slotted the lever yet. I want Steve-O to see it before I do that. If he wants it slotted, that's easy. That's like a five minute job on the mill and it really is a five minute job. Um, the main mounting plate, I think he should have that CNC engraved with jicks it or you know, whatever he wants to put on it rather than sticking it on the tank. I just think it would be subtle, um, sort of out of the way and whatnot. Um, it does spring back quite nicely, all thanks to the spring in the master cylinder. So I'm not sure we're going to need to run a return spring. I'm going to have a chat with Steve and see what he thinks. But um, if we do, then all it will have is like a, a hole in this backing plate and it'll be one of them springs. It's not like a coil spring, you know, like an exhaust spring or something like that. It's, it's, you, it's just a bigger version of what you find on a peg. <laughs> so it would go through a hole on the backing plate. It'd go around this brass boss and then you just have a hook that comes up and hooks underneath the lever. I might even put a hole in the bottom of the lever so it locates in there so you can't see it from the front. If we go that route, then that's the one that, there is a name for them. I can't think what it is. There is a name for it though. Someone will tell me. Um, but that way you won't see it at all. So that ain't gonna spoil anything. All I need to do is to chop down these threads on the end. Because um, the, the width of one of the locking nuts gets you an awful lot of movement on this lever. Um, so I will probably, actually I'm not going to chop it down until Steve-O sees it because he needs to okay all this. He does. Um, so that will do. All these fixings are going to get swapped out for dome heads. I still need to do the heel guard, but again, Steve-O needs to decide what he wants it to look like. So, you know, it is what it is, and it is basically done for now. And the other side's going to be a doddle, because it's just a lever and a peg and exactly the same bushes. I've got one now, I can copy. So that'll be fine. Right. Um, but, oh yeah, Kenny. Kenny Cack sent me a care package. He's a legend, that fella. Um, basically he's got a couple of, he's got a couple of risers here which he was, just wants 20 mil took off the bottom. So that's easy enough. I don't know if I'll clean them up for him or he wants to do it or whatever, but we're just going to shove that through the milling machine and take 20 mil off. So that's for his little project. And, but he sent me loads of this stuff. It's like all this, it's like a thin version of what I've got as the fire blankets and stuff. It's just like plastic and stuff. But, you know, you can each drink it in all sorts and, you know, bags and whatever. And he's basically doing it as a suggestion for covering up the, um, the, the Z-axis um, linear scale on the DRO. Because I haven't got anything at the minute. Might have to adapt it just a little bit. Because obviously there's a fixed part and a moving part. So this is going to need to sort of go around it. But I can make some covers out of this. Um, that might do as the base one. I just need to adapt it a little bit. And that way I won't get any goo in there. Any tips or anything. He's even sent some like sticky back Velcro strip stuff. Which is ideal. So that is going to work a treat. Thank you, Kenny. I really do appreciate that, mate. That's very kind of you. Um, we'll get that done. And... Hopefully it will keep that linear scale out of arm's way. Right, let's shove this on the bike and see what it's going to look like. Right, he's on. That does it, girl. I like that. It fits the bike. It's in keeping, I think. It's going to be better when I lock this off. That'll be fine. And it is going to need to be spaced out this way just a little bit. At the minute, I've got a couple of washers behind it, but I want a little bit more clearance around the back. Um, so when Steve goes down, what we'll do is we'll stick him on the bike, we'll set the lever where he wants it, you know, so it's all comfortable and whatnot, and he can make a decision about all this, and Bob's your uncle. That's it. Um, we've got enough room to put a double banjo in here. I'm not going to need a brake switch, because I'm going to run a hydraulic one, which is, the, I've had them on, like, the Blade and the R1 and all that, um, and they work a treat. Never gave me any troubles at all. 
So that's what we'll do, and it'll just be a nice, neat install, because it's you just run a double banjo, and it's like another banjo fit in. And then we can screw all the wires up around the back of the frame. Jobs are good. That'll do. That'll do a treat. This little um, doicky thing that I did the, the cold blue, where is it? This stuff. That's what I used. Philips Professional Cold Blue for metal parts and accessories. I never used it. I don't know if it's going to be any good, but I'd seen it and somebody suggested it and I thought I'd give it a go. Um, the, the, I did stone this to get like, you know, quite a nice finish and that was like a real fine, fine grit as well. And I think the nicer the finish on the part, the nicer the finish you get, because that has come up a treat. It almost looks like an anodized finish, but just on steel. Um, and I think the way it works, I think the way it works, is that you obviously get a chemical reaction with this and it, it lays down a layer of, you know, whatever on the part. Um, and then the oil that you put onto it goes into that layer and then it all sort of sets hard and I think that's the way it works. I could be wrong, I don't know. It don't say anything about it on here. <laughs> but this is the stuff the fella recommended so I'm giving it a go. And we shall see. It is a steel bit. So he's either, if we're not, if this don't work, he's either gonna need to paint it or powder coat it or do something. Um, Cause if you just leave it steel, it's just gonna rust, isn't it? So we need time, but we'll see how that goes. We'll see what he thinks. Um, but yeah, I'm quite happy with that. I think that's turned out well. <laughs> I do like the idea of doing a couple of simple jobs next. Just cause that took bloody age. Oh. I found me ratchet. Oldie Faithful is back. I don't know why, but I chucked it in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously just picked it up with loads of other stuff. Um, but yeah, I fancy the idea of doing a couple of simple jobs next, just cause, you know, it would be nice to do a simple job. So um, I need to remake the front engine mounts and I need to secure the bottom of the oil cooler. So I might have a go at those next. The, the front engine mounts, I want to change the plate because where the oil lines come down from the oil cooler, I want to run them through a P-clip and keep them where I want them to be. I don't want them just flopping about. So we're going to have an extra little bit on the front engine mount just so I can run a P-clip round and the hose can go through that. And then there was that idea of having a curved bit of tube with a plug and a peg on the bottom that locates on the bottom of the oil cooler. Um, so that'll just keep that where it needs to be. Um, so I'll probably get those two done um, next, I think. I think that would be a sensible move. Just because it's quick and it's another job ticked off. And it ain't going to take as long as them. These pegs are a little bit long at the minute, in, in my humble opinion. But again, I want Steve-O to sit on it and go, yeah, we can shorten them up or no, leave them as they are or whatever. Um, but he needs to sit on it to tell me all that. Okay, right. I am sorry this one has took a while to come out. I haven't had a great deal of time in here, it has to be said. And this machine in Malarkey takes ages, especially when you're not entirely sure what you're doing. You have to figure it out as you go along. I'm not a machinist. I'm saying it before, I'm saying it again. I'm not a machinist, I'm not a mechanic, I'm none of that, I'm a welder. That's what I do. I just really like doing all this sort of stuff because it's different to what I normally do. Um, there is a fella who's commented a few times, Bob, he's a tool maker. He's probably peeing himself laughing watching me do this. <laughs> but, you know, it's turned out all right. I'm happy with it. It just took me a bit longer than it would take him, I'm sure. <laughs> but there you go. That's where I'm going to leave it on this one. Do hope you're staying well and safe because it's all still mad out there. Yeah, <laughs> supposed to be in lockdown, although you wouldn't guess it from some people's goings on and what have you. But yeah, I hope you're staying well, and we'll see you again on the next one. Laters!